Okay, so it says recording here. Let's see if it's working here. Hmm, okay, so I have to pause. All right, it says we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Daily Freedom. I'm your host, Fernando Lopez, and today I have the privilege of interviewing Erica West. Erica is a realtor that educates and empowers people to have financial freedom through real estate. Erica, welcome. I Erica. love that. Thank you. I appreciate being on here. Hi, everyone <laughs> out there, whoever's watching this. But I like that introduction. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good. Yeah. So I, it, you know, when I first met you at OB Networking, that was one of the things that caught my attention about you was you using the the two words financial freedom yeah. a lot. And yeah. it's it's something that I haven't been hearing um, realtors use. Mm -hmm. So I really, you know, thought, you know, I'd love to interview you mm -hmm. and pick your brain a little bit. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can start uh, telling us a little bit about, say, why uh, real estate okay. is financial freedom. And you can then from there go into a little bit what happened that uh, in your life that uh, made you choose the career that you, yeah. you have. So why, let's go back. So why real estate is a is a key in financial freedom, essentially, right? Yeah. Is question number one. Well, I think the best part about real estate is that there's so many ways to acquire it for one. So you don't need a lot of money to acquire real estate. You can build good relationships and be able to get in, in other ways. Um, so I think it's something that's accessible to most people um, where other avenues of reaching financial freedom are less accessible. Um, I think it's a way it's versatile. You can use it in multiple different ways by accumul accumulating multiple properties, going into a syndication where you're a limited partner and having a piece of the pie in other people's, you know, doings and putting together that, or there's, I mean, there's just so many ways you can get involved in it. And real estate is beautiful because it essentially um, makes money over time in your sleep, right? Because they're not, they're not making more dirt on this earth. Okay. If anything, dirt is getting smaller and property, you know, properties in itself, strips of land are getting smaller. So if you own a piece of dirt, um, over time, you know, logically it's going to increase in value because there's less and less and less of it. So you have that, that appreciation built, and then you have equity, right? So you're paying down your mortgage, you're paying down, um, you know, your costs, or you're having other people pay down your mortgage while it's growing value, essentially in your sleep, you're paying down what you owe on it. And it's like a big piggy bank. I call it my adult piggy bank, right? You're putting money into it every month. You're paying your mortgage. Yes, you're paying interest. That, that just goes without saying. But you're paying down your mortgage. It's building an equity. It's building an appreciation. And so it's this growing savings account that is going to grow um, more than any you know, Bank of America Chase account that you're ever going to have. And even stocks, it's less volatile than stocks. So it's just a huge piece in wealth and being able to accumulate over time, have it paid down, growing in appreciation and being able to unlock that wealth to, to accumulate more and repeat, put it on repeat over mm. and over and over. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Piggy bank for adults. Now. Yeah, right. You have to pay it, right? Or okay. else you're going to be in trouble and you, you have to pay it every single month. And it, and it hurts. It feels like you're just throwing money out, but it's not. I mean, you're paying yourself other than taxes and insurance, mm -hmm. right? You're paying yourself every month. It's your own little piggy bank. Yeah, I yeah. love that a lot. What do you think, um, something about millennials or younger people that in, re in relation to buying houses or not, not buying houses, how, how have you, what's your your take yeah. on, on, on the say millennials, uh, buying properties, how are they doing? Yeah. Well, I, I have a couple different takes on it. Um, one being first is buying is not for everyone. It's not some people should be renting. Okay. 
So I think there's kind of a, a little bit of miscommunication with some real estate agents. They're out there pushing, you know, renting or buying is better than renting, Buy, buying is better than renting. Not always, okay? Because there are costs with, associated with owning a home. You know, some people say you can own a home for the same that you could rent it for. And that's true in the sense, but it's also, you're responsible if the furnace goes out. You're responsible if you need a new roof. And you have to be able to have that savings and that cushion. So one, one thing I do like to say is it's not necessarily for everyone. Now, do I think everyone should be a homeowner? Yes. But it, sometimes it's not the right time and it's not the right situation to own a home. Um, but I do think there's a lot of people that can buy a house and they don't know that they can. Um, there's a lot of people that think you have to have 20% down or you have to make a certain amount of money or you know, maybe you have a little bit of an unconventional job structure and you think that you're not able to afford or able to qualify to buy a house. So I think there's a lot of misinformation about that. And if you're paying, I mean, it depends on the area that you're living in, but sometimes you're paying way more in rent than it would be to afford a house and your expenses on top of it. So I think in a sense, most people are able, if you have a steady job, are able to afford purchasing a home. And they sometimes get scared because it does come with a cost, but what you're gaining is way more than what you're losing, you mm. know, over time. Right. I love that. I love that a lot. And how do you usually go about, um, say helping people, uh, overcome the, the fear of transition or transitioning from renting to owning? Right. Well, I always start with a question of what's your, what's your comfortable monthly payment? You know, what can you pay a month? And you're not going to, it's not going to be a huge financial stress on you. Or even what are you paying in rent right now? Utilities bills. What are you paying right now that you're comfortable with paying? And how can we work that backward into a mortgage payment? Like a lot of people, they go, woohoo, I got pre-approved for $700,000. Well, you might not want that payment. So what can you afford now? And how do we work backwards and restructure that so that you're already, you're already in that comfortable payment? And you're and you have you know five six months worth of expenses in an account in case anything goes wrong, right? Um, so I think that that's really important. I like that. So going with what people are already spending, they're used to spending, mm -hmm. and yeah. then working backwards. Wow, that's right. pretty cool. Right. And then you just told me that you. Uh, how about people that are looking into maybe their second purchase? Uh, as for solely as an investment. So they're not looking to move into the property. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me earlier that you just closed on an uh, yeah. investment property yeah. that's out of state. Yes. So um, so maybe talk a little bit about why out of state and, okay. uh, and, and how you did the deal, how you, yeah. how you made it work. Yeah, I love that question. Okay, so I'm originally from Michigan and did uh real estate in michigan for several years so i knew that market really well um and when you say i did real estate what do you mean by that i i worked as a real estate sales associate in okay. michigan for um about three years but before that you know going back to why i even got into real estate in the first place my dad's an investor and I was the only daughter that showed a lot of interest in investing and, and what it all meant and why it got my dad so excited. And um, he's the person that really like triggered me to want to get involved in real estate. And we can go into that, but more or less. Um, so I was comfortable with the Michigan market. I knew that market inside and out. That's not to say you need to know a market inside and out in order to invest in it, but you should know an agent that does know the market inside and out. Um, I think having an agent as support is huge and make sh making sure that they're investor friendly agents because a lot of them aren't okay because it takes a lot more work, but it's worth it um, in the end to help people build what they're what they're hoping to build through real estate. But um, in this situation in particular, I knew it was a good investment because it was a situation where um, the owner wanted out of it and she did not want to put any work into it. She didn't want to list it because she didn't want um, buyers to come, come through it and ask for inspection repairs. And she wanted to sell it to someone that was willing to just take it off of her hands. She didn't want to put it on the open market. It's very rare. Okay. 
um, especially seeing as it was a really good time in the market to sell your property on the market, but she didn't want to. She wanted someone that was just going to take it off of her hands. And so she was willing to sell it at a lesser price because of that. And so we said, we'll take it. No inspection. You can move out when you want. We'll take it. But our price is 175000 When you say we, yeah. who, who is we? Me and my partner, okay. Jeff. Uh, business partner and life partner. <laughs> and we just decided this was the number that made sense for us. This was a number that made sense. Even if there was inspection problems, it, it would be okay. Um, and it was in a good area, good suburb, you know, right by the lake in a, in a good family home. And so we just decided we were going to um, rent it out long-term. We just, we were trying to decide if we wanted to buy it because it needed a lot of work done to it, buy it, renovate it, and then um, rent it and then pull money out of it. But we decided just to buy it, renovate it, and put a renter into it for right now. And then we can pull money out of it if we ever need to access that money to purchase another investment. Um, so yeah, it went well. We purchased it for 175000 and it appraised at 270000 so we wow. got it, yeah, almost $100,000 under what it was worth at the wow. time, and then put some money into it, and then put a family into it, and now we are cash flowing like $750 a month on it, and it's worth way more than we bought it for, so if we needed to access that money in order to purchase another investment, we could. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I love that strategy, and so you said it was very rare or it was, it was a very rare opportunity. Right. Um, let's see, where can we go from here? Maybe talk a little bit about your father as, as, as an influencer yeah. in your life. Yeah. Uh, and, and what kind of investor was he? Yeah. You said real estate, but specifically what kind of investor in real estate? Yeah, I like that question. So my dad's huge in my life. Um, he worked a nine, it felt like nine to seven, you know, nine to five job um, as a mechanic his whole life. What kind of mechanic? And yeah, we don't need to get into that. Okay. I have no idea. But <laughs> he was a mechanic. Like a car mechanic? Yeah. Okay, car. Yeah. Car yeah. mechanic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna, it could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. Car mechanic. So he, <laughs> you know, a very blue collar, right, job. And his, I don't know what, whatever got his spark in real estate, but it was his, it, it was his freedom for him. Um, that was going to be how he was going to, um, accumulate wealth and step out of his, um, W2 job. And it took him 30 something years, but he just retired. You could call it a couple months ago. So I'm super proud of him. Um, his first true investment ever was an apartment complex that he got on a land contract um, that he had a land contract on it for like 20 years and just got ownership of it in, a couple of years ago, like true wow. ownership of it. And, um, yeah, as a kid, he would take me and my sisters over there to the apartments, which is called the apartments to us as kids. We'd go out there and shovel and rake. And we hated that growing up until, um, he finally taught us like what the purpose was in all of it. Um, and so my dad was, so what was the purpose? right to, to basically have a, a, a piece of financial security, right? Um, because once these apartments are paid off, they're for one, it's going to be worth millions. Um, it cash flows. And I mean, we've had it be a space to also house uh, people in our family that are going through stuff um, and to use it for other reasons to serve a, a higher purpose. And so he has multiple long-term investments, duplexes, triplexes, like small multifamily, single family, and our newest investment in a short-term rental in um, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So we invest together now. But, um, and you can tell I, I get off topic very quickly. So Good. moving back. Good. Yeah. Please uh, open as many op uh, yeah. loops as you want. Yeah. Well, so he took me to an investor seminar that, you know, those seminars that just get you really juiced up. Someone walks out, they get the crowd pumping. They're talking about like being millionaires, financial freedom. What does that mean to you? And at the time, you know, I was a teenager and I was just like, oh, like not having to work and having a ton of money. Like that sounds great. 
right? And that still can be your why. That still can be your purpose, not having to work and having a ton of money. Um, and to me, that was just empowering, you know, um, not being, you know, because I saw my dad, what felt like enslaved to this, you know, this job, this nine to five, and this mechanic, and he supported our family for years and years and years and years. And to think of breaking free from that and what is possible like to create and what to do and how you can, you know, spend time with your family and you can volunteer and you can help teach other people about all this to me, it was like the most interesting part of it, but we got juiced up at the seminar and I decided I wanted to be involved somehow. Um, how old were you as a teenager? Oh God, I was probably 17, okay. 16, 17 years old. Then I went to school. I went to school for, uh, I went to CMU, Central Michigan University to uh, get a degree in psychology and family studies. So mm -hmm. I was very interested in people and people work and thought that I wanted to be a counselor. Mm -hmm. um, I think people that want to be counselors also want to figure out themselves, right? Figure mm -hmm. out other people and learn and teach and grow. And um, I realized shortly after graduating, doing a social work internship and working with um, people in that field um, that it wasn't for me um, because I am a huge empath and I really care and I was getting way too involved mm -hmm. and I was caring way too much. And I had to kind of make this decision. I felt at the time, whether it's right or wrong, more or less, whether I wanted to keep this soft, empathetic human part of myself or um, harden a little bit and stiffen up because I was going to have to work with so much um, sadness and stress and anxiety and um, familial issues. And, and there was so much into it that you have to grow hard to that stuff. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that. I, I liked that part of myself. And I decided that um, I didn't know that that was the direction I wanted to go. So my mom had a group on to get a real estate license for my dad. She was like, honey, you're investing in real estate your whole life. You, you should just become a realtor, right? And, and do your own thing and invest and be a real estate agent, whatever. You can do it all. And it was about to expire and he was never going to do it. He didn't want to do it. And I was just like, okay, I'll do it. I'll go get my real estate license. So it was kind of happenstance. Like I wasn't, I didn't really know what it was, and what I wanted to do. Um, and after, you know, fa fast forward to now, I am working with people um, in a, in a, in a different environment than counseling, but very similar, right? People are going, people are, are dying, right? Selling their mother's home who have passed away or spouse or whatever it is. People are getting divorced, right? So they're dealing with marriage issues and stress and kids and, um, you know, relocating and stuff. So you're really dealing with people still in that sense of life, but you're also able to, um, you know, step out of it and have a boundary, right? Where you're able to help and be there and be their confidant and help them through this process, but then step out of it um, in, a, in a sense and have that boundary. And I like it a lot, you know? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. It reminds, okay, so many uh, things I could say next. Uh, let's see, where, how about this? Um, I'll share a little bit of how yeah. I got started uh, uh, in connection to what you just said about being a counselor. Yeah, I like that. So I got started um, by going to one of the seminars that are that I got really also juiced up. Yeah, right. Like I talked to you really pumped. And six years earlier, I got pumped by a commercial okay. on TV from uh, Carlton Sheets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, are you yeah. familiar? Yes. Okay. So no money down techniques with Carl. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that was, you know, probably 1998. I knew very little English then I was an immigrant. Mm. Uh, and I was like, but I couldn't understand. I, I got motivated to, to invest $200 in those CDs, mm -hmm. you know, from Carl. It's a big deal, right? Yes. Really big deal. Uh, then I start following the steps that came in the home study course and one of the steps was to call for sale by owners. Yeah. And then I think my first call didn't go very well and I gave up. Um, 
six years later, I found myself being a life insurance agent, being uh, invited to a Get Motivated seminar. So the seminar is yeah. called Get Motivated. And Love it. The headliner was Zig Ziglar mm-hmm. in Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, and um, so I went to it, and one of the speakers was R- uh, Russ Whitney. Okay. Russ Whitney was similar to uh, Carlton Sheets, teaching people no money down, no money down techniques. And he sold a two hundred dollar course then, and I bought it. And he came with a three free day seminar. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know at the time when I went to the three free day seminar it was a free to get in, but not free to get out. Right. And I I purchased a twenty thousand yep. uh, dollar coaching program, yep. mentorship program. Then that um, you know I was very excited to to you know make that money back yeah, as quickly it's a as huge possible. Commitment. So it's really cool that you, you know, at 17, found yourself in one of the seminars. Yeah. And yeah. going to this, the, the 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 seminars then that I purchased, I realized that most people were not making money. And it was uh, usually 200 people per class. And um, and then seeing the same people over and over and different, you know, as the one year program, um, I, I, I realized how mindset was important in, oh, wow. and, yeah. and and i had uh luckily uh russ whitney had brought a hypnotherapist to speak to the group and then i also invested in that and um and i learned how to do self-hypnosis to then help me do what my mentor in real estate was telling me to do mm-hmm. and letting go of uh my biggest fear was the numbers like real estate was big numbers yeah so yeah. i i uh, was not so yeah, so, so you had that advantage though, being able to hypnotize yourself essentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it sounds like you were extremely committed. You know, everything you did Twice a day. committed to morning it. evening yeah. was two sessions yeah. that I did yeah. for an entire year. And that made the whole the difference for you. For yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and um so back to say, so your father, now you're investing with your father, you yeah. got your license. Um, I'm thinking here, um, we have just a few more minutes because I need, I know you need to go. Yeah. Um, maybe talk a little bit about, say, a little bit more about mind, mindset oh, yeah. and, and getting juiced up uh, and motivation and then perhaps a little bit of habits, right. how, to, how to sustain them. I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So for one, I am huge on like a morning routine that to me. Like the second I wake up until like 12 is almost completely structured down to like when I put my tea into the microwave to warm it up. I mean, completely structured (laughs) after 12, my day is chaos. Like, you know, I'm going to appointments, I'm doing something like this. I'm, I'm showing houses or whatever it is networking, but up until 12, almost every single day, you know, aside from we did that networking group, but is completely curated. And I think that is extremely important for success. Um, so morning routine is huge for me. Um, a little bit about my morning routine, I guess. So I think for one mindset first, so waking up, meditating, getting a second of silence before, you know, this world, this chaotic world kicks in right? Your phone's buzzing. You're constantly attached to something. If you have one of those watches, which I'll never buy, right? Is buzzing in the morning. Like you need a moment of silence. Whether that's two minutes, five minutes, if you can do 10, 20, that's amazing. But for me, I I always stick to five, like five is manageable. And it it, it gives me enough time before my mind starts wandering about the whole day. Um, Exercise. So what do you do in those five minutes? I, it's just five minutes of silence. If I, I'll either be sitting up, laying down. I won't do it in bed because I'll fall back asleep, right? I'll get up, I'll go lay on my yoga mat. Um, sometimes I'll put sound healing on in the background, um, just something to to flow through my brain. But I'm I'm really just trying to be quiet um, with my thoughts. You let your thoughts come through and you acknowledge them and you let them pass. But just sitting there in silence and just having that moment of like connection to yourself in the morning is super important to me. Um, and then exercise, right. Just getting that, you know, out of the way in the morning, because it's never going to happen at the end of the day, at least not for me. 
So you get your body moving, exercising, whatever. And then I have a structure of, of Zoom calls and different things that I do in the morning, every single morning um, that all have to do with mindset. Mm. So mindset is huge for me. Um, and I think that you're a product of your environment. So I surround myself with other people that are on that same journey and they are realtors. Um, I get on a Zoom call with realtors all over the country every morning for 20 minutes. And we talk about, we read out of this book um, together. One sentence, we'll pull it apart and we'll just mush it up and we'll figure out how many ways that hits us and in and, and different ways that it'll impact us from there on out for the rest of the day in our business and our life, whatever it is. Um, just like today, we talked about coming from contribution. Just one sentence, come from contribution. Okay, what does that mean to you, right? As a real estate agent, our job isn't just to show houses and write offers and help people buy something. It's also being a connector in the community. How can we come from contribution? How can we support a local business too and bring our clients in to support someone else? Or how can we feed our clients information that's that's important to them, that makes sense to them, right? How do we come from contribution so that um, they also want to support our business and our mission and what we're doing too? And so like this morning, that's the that's the sentence we picked apart for 20 minutes. So mindset is huge. Um, and, you know, I, I do the whole put sticky notes around my my house um, to, to really um, remind yourself every day of like, like I said earlier, consciously deciding where you want to go. Um, because a lot of the times we are subconsciously like moving in different directions and not really understanding where we're going and just like letting the day take control of us. Or instead, um, I work on trying to take control of my day and consciously deciding like everything that I'm doing is this in alignment with like what I want to be and what I'm trying to grow and who I'm trying to talk to and what I'm trying to do with my life, you know? I love it. Yeah. Wow. Very inspiring. You're very inspired by your words and how you you do yeah. your morning. Yeah. It's important. Very cool. Well, um, we can start wrapping up. Um, how can people people get in touch with you? Yeah. So um my Instagram is Erica Moves Me. Simple. And you can get in touch with me there. Um, if you want to get my phone number information, stuff like that, then you can just message me on there. And I do like to post funny, silly content on there. Um, I do a lot, like if I'm at showings and something hilarious happens, or, you know, sometimes it's just valuable content about what's going on in the market right now, or just like little tidbits on how you can, you know, start on your path of wealth, what podcasts to listen to, um, what networks to join, what Facebook groups to join, um, different things that you can do to add equity to your home or to tap into your equity or, how to figure out what your home is worth or there's so much that I'm able to share on there so people can find me there. Um, wonderful. Yeah. Erica moves me. Erica moves me. On Instagram. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. It's a little play on words too. Like I want it to be like Erica moves me, like helps me move. Right. But also like Erica moves me. Right. Like how can I move people? Like how can I help people grow and, and move and I don't know, create something bigger. Look at us. <laughs> Perfect. The we, did. we did great. Awesome. All right. Sweet. Cool. Thanks. All right. Well, everyone uh, watching, listening, um, comment below one, two or three takeaways from today. You know that if you notate those takeaways, it's more likely for you to act them out in your life. Yeah. I hope you found this conversation inspiring and uh, uh, go to Instagram and find Erica there and uh, share, like and uh, subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for the next interview coming up soon. And have a great day. Bye-bye for now. All right.